Groundgrange, the home of Basingstoke Croquet Club. Just for orientation, we are alongside the walled garden and just up the hill from the Toby Carvery. This short film is going to be a brief introduction to Association Croquet. This game was introduced to England in about 1860 from Ireland and although it has a French name, croquet is virtually unknown in France. The first thing you notice on walking onto a croquet lawn, or court as it's properly called, is just how big it is. A croquet lawn is 35 yards long and 28 yards wide. So that if balls are in opposite corners, they're over 40 yards apart, which uh, takes some doing if you're going to hit one with the other. Since the game was introduced, there have been few changes to the court layout uh, and the rules, but those that have have been quite important. In particular, the hoops have changed quite significantly. They are now quite large pieces of metal with carrots which go a long way into the ground so that they are very stable. The balls are a consistent weight, a pound each, and they are also milled on the surface so that they grip the grass as they're rolling along. There is very little clearance between the ball and the edges of the hoop. That is actually extremely generous, being about a quarter of an inch. In championship croquet, the gap is down to about a 32nd of an inch. So how is the game played? Well, basically it's a race between two, these two balls and these two balls to go through 12 hoops and then for each ball to hit the peg in the middle of the lawn. So there are two sides. The first side plays with black and blue and the other side plays with red and yellow. And sides, as in tennis, can be either singles or doubles. In singles, one player plays with these two balls and the other player with these. And in doubles, each player has their own ball. So how do we play the game? Well, the principle is very simple. If you hit one ball with another ball, you have another turn. So, if I hit... I hit the yellow ball with the red ball, so I pick the red ball up and put it against the yellow ball anywhere I like, like that and then I have my next shot. And this is called a croquet shot. This is how the game gets its name. And having done that, I have yet another shot called a continuation shot. And you'll notice that I've landed very carefully in front of a hoop, and so I'm going to run through the hoop on my continuation shot. And having run a hoop, I get yet another shot. So we run the hoop with the red ball and I'd already put the yellow ball in front of the hoop because of my, by the shot that I played before I ran the hoop. So I can now hit the yellow ball again. And now I have to think about going through some other hoops. The next one in, in order is hoop two, which is, um, about 15 yards away and the one after that is across on the other side of the lawn and as it happens I've managed to get the other balls in the right places to run those hoops. In order to run a hoop you have to have a ball already beside it to play off as we did when we came through hoop one and I played off the yellow. So I'm now going to put the yellow ball by the next hoop but one in order, hoop three which is across the other side of the lawn and I'll then play off the black ball which is in the middle of the lawn. Just adjusting my croquet shot, making sure that everything's in line. So the yellow ball has gone across to hoop three and my red ball has ended up close to the black ball. So here we are, 
my red ball is close to the black ball and the black ball is what's called a pivot. It stays more or less in the centre of the lawn and we use it as a, a catch-all. So I'm just, all I need to do is to touch the black with the red. Now I can pick up the red again and play yet another croquet shot to get over to the blue ball which is beside hoop two. So I now put my red ball alongside the black. I'm going to leave the black ball here and I'm going to play the red ball as it's close to the blue. The black ball must move slightly. If it doesn't move it's a, it's a fault. So I'm going to play the red ball across to the blue. So our red ball has ended up quite close to the blue and I'm just going to move the blue slightly nearer the hoop. It's called a roque when you just hit the other ball. Very gently. There we are. So having hit the blue ball I can now pick up my red ball again, put it somewhere alongside the blue ball in preparation for running the hoop. And this time, after I've run hoop two, I want to be going to my right, so I'm going to put the blue ball on the right of the hoop after, it's, after I've um, run it. So again, just a little gentle shot will put my red ball in front of the hoop. There we are. And I run the hoop. I come back and hit the blue ball again. Having Every time I run a hoop, all the balls can be hit again. So basically, that's all there is to croquet. It's a sequence of hitting one ball, the other ball, running hoops and so on. But you have to do it 12 times with one ball, then 12 times with your other ball, and then hit the peg in the middle with each ball in turn. So that can take quite a little time, depending on how good you are. Obviously, people who play croquet have different levels of ability, and so there is a handicap system which evens things out to some extent. And we use these things called bisques. All it is is a little piece of white stick, and if I was playing my friend Edward here, his handicap is 24, mine is 6, and so we take the difference, which is 18. So Edward gets 18 bisques, and here they are lined up 5, 10, 18 altogether. And what those enable him to do is if he wishes, he, uh, if he makes an error or something, even without making an error, he can improve his game by taking a bisque which gives him a completely new turn which is basically to hitting all the balls, running hoops, just as you would do if you just walked onto the lawn. So bisques are really very, very powerful tools indeed, and you can win or lose a game by how well you use your bisques. So here we are. This is the, the final hurdle, hitting the peg with each of your balls. And of course, this is where the phrase pegging out comes from. It's a croquet phrase, to peg out, to end the game, to die. And Hopefully we don't all die after hitting the peg in croquet, but um, it's a, a signal event when you win a game. Now if you'd like to come and play croquet, you are most welcome. We only play here between April and September each year, but we have a, an indoor event usually in February and people will be most welcome to come to that. And we have details on our website and you'll be able to see this film as well on that and details of the club will be coming up shortly on your screens thank you very much indeed for watching we hope you've enjoyed watching this little film and do come and enjoy playing croquet at downgrange